Hi, welcome to Just Stuff. So today I want to look at Beehive and I'm going to use the virtual box environment as a base that we created in the first video of Just Stuff. So if you haven't um, created that, if you haven't looked at that video, check it out. It's not required. The only reason I'm using virtual box is with all this playing around that I'm going to be doing in the series, I don't want to mess up my system and I don't want to mess up either my Mac or my actual Linux box. So I'll just use virtual box. So, okay, let's start with Beehive. So Beehive has to do with, they take this um, concept of bees, right? Like if you have a beehive, uh, what does it have? Well, queen bee, yes, but um, some bees. And what do bees do? They go out and they um, look for honey and whatever, right? And they have different roles within the hive. And so if you think of a bee that can, that can um, check your email, for example, and maybe this bee is responsible for checking your home email, you can have another bee that's responsible for checking your work email. Those two bees, you can call them email bees, but you can configure each instance of an email bee to check different things, right? Like oh, you can have worker bees, and then the worker bees might be out um, scanning for honey in one area, and another worker bee would be scanning for honey in or pollinated flowers in another area, right? They still work with bees. It's just that they're operating in different places. And similarly, you can have an email bee and configure it to talk to different email systems. Um, you can have a Twitter bee. And again, you can have a Twitter bee that is configured to look at your and monitor your Twitter account or post to your Twitter account, as we will see, that it can sort of like read or, you know, post. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Or you could have a Twitter bee that, again, is tied to your business, some business account, and you want to keep the two separate, right? Um, you can have a bee that knows how to talk to Hacker News, that website. Um, you can have another bee that knows how to get a weather information. And so on and on and on. So there can be many, many types of bees. And so this BA program gives you um, these plugins and there are a couple well them we're gonna look at and um, you can write your own. So what can your bee do? Well, I sort of given a hint earlier, right? Um, your bees can emit events. So you can imagine that you have a bee that's configured for work email and it goes out and, well, it's monitoring your work email. And every time an email comes in, it can emit that, hey, we have a new email, right? Or you can have a bee that's your Twitter bee and it can monitor your Twitter account and then spit out like, hey, there's a new tweet. Um, you might have a bee that's monitoring Hacker News and it could spit out an event that says there's a new story that's been posted to Hacker News, right? So it's doing work on behalf of you, right? It's doing things for you. And another bee might be a weather bee. And it would spit out an event that says, hey, there's a new weather update and it might be configured to do this daily, right? So, so say there's a new, this is the new weather update for today or this is the weather for today. But it might also be monitoring weather and also spit out an event that says, hey, there's been a warning for something freakish in your area. Or maybe you could imagine that so if you're into seismology, you might have a bee that's monitoring, um, you know, this seismological website or something looking for you know, when there are different um, earthquake events or something of a certain, um, you know, magnitude, right? So those would be an example, that would be an example of a different being would emit these things like, hey, there's a earthquake event or a seismological event of a, you know, magnitude four or five or six or something like that. Well, in addition to emitting events, your bees can also perform actions. And so your Twitter bee, for example, my one action can perform is being able to post a tweet. So there are two things, right? There's the event that it can emit and the action it can take. And so your email B, for example, might be able to emit events when you have a new email, but it can also do actions like post an email. Um, and so what you can do now, once you have this ability, is you can create chains, as they call them in this program, Beehive. And that's when you link bees together. And so you can have a Twitter bee, for example, emit the event that there's a new tweet for whatever, you can filter it if you like. Um, and you know, once it gets this new tweet, maybe in one account, maybe it retweets it, right? It posts a new tweet. Um, you may have a bee that's monitoring Hacker News and it puts out, oh, there's a new Hacker News story. And then they might send an email, right? Or you can have weather 
that you know daily update and it sends it into the email b and notice now the acker b and the where b are using the one email b because if you have this one email b that can send email well you don't need to have multiple of them unless you send it to different emails or something like that and i didn't show it here but you can imagine having tons of other bees that just chain together to do really complicated things right and for that one with the warning well, daily update might go to email, but you might want when it's this particular event for a warning, it actually sends an SMS to you because that's not something you want to wait and get to your email. Maybe you want to know right away and let's assume that oh, once you get SMS messages, you probably check them, right? So this is how you create chains um, using your bees. Okay, so now that we have that um, in our back pocket, you know, we have a sort of idea of how it works. Let's go see how what we can learn about a project and follow the steps to impl install it. All right, so here I am on the um, Beehive website. Well, it's not quite website, the project website in GitHub. They don't actually have a website. And so it says it's a flexible event slash agent and automation system with lots of bees, All right? If you scroll past the code, you can see it's written in Go. It says that Beehive is an event and agent system which allow you to create your own agents that perform automated tasks triggered by events and filters. So I mentioned the events. Well, just imagine now that you can add filters to those events. So maybe you can say that, oh, even though I'm listening to tweets, I only interested in a certain um, tweet um, that of this topic or containing some words or something like that. Um, and I give an example too of the seismology, like you're only interested in a certain magnitude so that would be a way to filter out events it has modules we call them hives so it can interface with you know talk to retrieve information from blah 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 and so to name just a few um check out this full list of available hives and we'll get to that in a bit all right so your hive is where it is able to interact with all these different things and the bees in those hive are going to be the individual instances um, so hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer. You have bees in Hive and they are a specific type. Here they have some pre-built binaries that you can just download. Remember this is with Go, so it's easy to cross compile. Um, I, I'm not gonna run it on my Mac or anything, so I'm gonna download the Linux static binary. You can run it in Docker. We haven't covered Docker yet. That's gonna be something we talk about in my Go, lang Go on the run. Um, you can build it from source, but I would recommend, unless you have a really good reason that you want to build it, um, best you just download one of the statically built ones. So that's what I'm going to do. So here we go. I'll just right click. I'll get the link for it since I'm using um, on my Mac, but I want to download the Linux one. I'll get the link for it. And then I'll start up our virtual box but what i want to do is create a clone of the one that we already have because i don't want to mess up the base one so i'm going to use that as a base for all the other vm environments i'm going to create and so if i just clone it i can if i don't regenerate the mac address then my clone and the original will have the same mac address so i don't want that so i say generate a new mac address for this clone um there are very rare instances where you actually create a clone and want the same mac address like that doesn't that would probably want to add up if you want to run both of them. When you clone, you can do a full clone or a link clone, and you can read the description of the difference between the two. Essentially, the full clone would give you two completely separate um, virtual machines, but um, if as you imagine one virtual machine, the original is 20 gigs, the next one is gonna also be 20 gigs. By linking them, uh, VirtualBox is able to do something very clever by creating a snapshot within the image so that changes that you make in the link doesn't link vm doesn't affect the original and that's sort of what i want to do i can also delete this clone and not affect the previous one so if you did a full clone you that would be also be the case but it's also safe to delete a clone one and you can clone many virtual um, vms from this um base image now in terms of logging in i don't know the ip address of this new one so let me log in locally on this virtual console get the IP address, and then I'm going to log in from my desktop. Now, the reason why I want to log in from my desktop is because I copy that link and I want to be able to paste it. I can paste in this virtual environment, but this window is so small and all this other stuff. And so I just write a SSH in, in from my iTerm and then use it. So now I see the IP address is ends in 222. 
I'm going to SSH from my desktop. If you remember when we set up our virtual environment, we also did a SCP-ID, SSH copy that ID, which allows us to do passwordless login. When I clone the virtual machine, it has that same information. So even though it's a different IP, I can still SSH it. The only thing I'm prompted for is to verify that how I know this machine. And that's it. So now I'm in and now I can do like wget and paste that um, link that I copied and download the beehive. I'll just extract it. And now I have the beehive that's already built. Um, if I want to see before I extract it, what was in that, I can do tar t z t f, which is z for unzip, t for test and f for the image for the file name sorry image name the archive name and then now i can do zxf x for extract f for file z for because it's gzip and so now i have um these three file license readme and beehive i only care about beehive now to run beehive is very simple it's a single binary and because it's built it has all the it knows where the images and everything is all embedded in it you can just run Beehive alone by itself and it would actually start. It creates a config file. You don't have to think about it. Don't worry about the config file. You can look at it if you like. However, when you run Beehive, it binds local to the local IP address. What this means is that because it points to a local IP address, which is usually 127.0.x on Linux system, on Linux like you or Unix like system, it means that since we have a virtual machine and we're not trying to connect from the virtual machine, but rather from our desktop or wherever to that virtual machine. If it's listening on your local IP address, you're not going to be able to connect to it. And so that will fail. And so let me show you that. Um, fortunately, Beehive know about this already and plan for it. If you do minus H for help, they'll show you some option you can pass. And one of them is the bind address. So now you can specify that the bind address is the IP address. And so that means if it binds to that interface, now you can connect over that interface. Now, if you've done go networking with me, this all makes sense. Like you can bind locally or you can bind to a number of addresses. Um, but now we're specifying to bind to this specific IP address interface. And we can see that uh, now when we try to run, we are connected, but we still don't see anything on the screen in <laughs> the web browser. But we can see some activity there in the BI log. So this is now, where Beehive is trying to figure out where to load those, how to load those artifacts, and it can't load them. And that's because it's trying to use local to load the artifacts, so you have to tell it what a conical name is. Now, why they separate these two things, I don't know, but I'm not here to second guess their design and implementation. So if we look at the help again, you'll see something say conical URL string, and it tells you that oh, that's where the API and admin interface is, and so, we can just specify that. I copy and paste that, specify it. And now um, if I rerun, and again, you'll see it fail. And the reason it fails now is because even though I give it the IP address, I didn't give it the protocol. So I'll just go back, rerun it with the protocol, um, HTTP in this case, because we're not doing anything secure. And now when I refresh, I can access the interface. And if we just scroll the down our list here of available hives, you can see that oh, we have hives that have be, that, um, that can access email, do Chrome job, Twitter, all this other stuff. And they have new at the bottom of each hive to say create a B for that hive. And so um, the one we're going to start with is the Chrome tab one. Um, that's the most straightforward and easiest. And if you click on any hive, it gives you a description of how to use that hive. Now we've clicked on the Chrome um, hive, I guess. Um, we see it how it triggers an event. I zoom in. Triggers an event at a given interval. And so um, these are the things that you're going to be able to configure. And then each time it triggers, that's the configuration properties. Um, every time it triggers, it emits. The time so this is one of those bees that doesn't take any action you can't tell it to do something else but it can produce an event and so if we click on bees you'll see you don't have any bees defined yet you know and it tell you to check out the available hive and then create your first one there we talk about chains we don't have any chains of course so you could click here to go back to the beehive to list the beehives 
and these are the hives, right? So this home button and this is the exact same thing. All right, so we click on Chrome before. Um, there is the file notification one. You can monitor a path to see when something changed and we'll play with those and see. And then of course you have the email ones, right? Um, so this one lets you send email. This one helps you set up an email server so you can receive emails. Um, there are ones for Facebook, um, GitLab. So let's now create, create a new bee from this cron hive. And so we click there and let's give it a name and we'll just call it my cron B. And this is just a cron B. You know, very creative there. And these are the configuration properties again. So if you don't know anything about Chrome, it's basically um, it's from this scheduler in Unix-like system called Chrome Tab. I allow you to specify periodic events um, or to run command periodically, and you can specify how often. Star essentially means that uh, on every second or every minute or every hour, that's what star means. So if I put star in all of these, it means every hour, every day, every second. Um, um, if it was a Chrome tab command, run that command. So let's say we want to get an email every two seconds, you could do something like this. And you can look for Chrome tab help, something like that. And if we go to maybe Chrome tab webpage here, and you can see a little bit about it. And you can see here we have minutes, hours, the same exact same thing. It explains the star, and then you can put ranges, of course, like this sort of stuff, like comma, and then you can do like the forward slash. Um, yep, and so let's go back. Um, oh, where's my thing? Yep, so I could say every two minutes, or I rather this is seconds, so uh, I don't want anything for seconds, um, but let's say every two minutes we want to send um an email um in event out and so i can put star there for, for these other guys um and now i say create b and so it says it's currently stop okay so let's i go now to b's you'll see there's my chrome tab b i can delete it i can start it all this other stuff okay um let's create another b um let's create a b that monitor a file set. well you know what let's create an email b. and so i have an email account that i created just for testing and so if i click on inbox here you see there's no email or anything and so we go back again over here and so let me see if i can and so you can see here, the two things that we discussed, this particular um, B doesn't produce any events. So it doesn't monitor your email and tell you when there's a new email, but it, the action it, it allows is that you can send an email. So let's go back and create a B from it. Sorry, I need to click on this new B. And so you could create multiple Bs from that hive, right? That email hive you could think of it as. So let's call it, um, just stuff email sender if we want and then send stuff at stivrsit storyversity ty storyversity I have to take a second to spell that and then the username and there we go and then the password and and then it's already running and so I don't have to do anything I don't need to make save any changes so now if I click here I should have two B's um, my email one is already running I don't know why my Chrome tab one stopped but I when I created it should have started but I could click start let's see here um, finish mm. All right, let's see. Um, maybe let's edit it and see if we put star in there and then save changes. Does that keep it running? Hmm. 
not sure why it's not running um, let me see on every the beginning of every second let's do that start running okay so somehow it, it didn't like the configuration I had before <laughs> so if you create it and you don't see it running then yeah go back and fix it but okay so now I have my two B's oh it stopped again that is so weird so I don't know why it says finish uh -huh. So one and one, one, nil, nil, two. So what if I put five here and I say stop, start? Is it gonna put five? Hmm. Let's see if we can try and figure out what is failing. So if I stop it and I start it, so nil nil that is so weird okay so let me do this one two three four five uh, let's say 12. i'm gonna save it i want to see what happens in terms of error message so the error message is not changing it's still showing essentially the same thing so i'm not sure how to get this to accept the correct value but according to the documentation this should be fine and it's not working so we're not going to be able to use this b um but we have email b let's create a new file notification b if we click on that you can see it's just specifying as file path as the configuration and then the event is going to be a file system event and that contains the type of event that occur and the path on which it occurs, which is the path you would have specified. So let's do this. Sorry, uh, I gotta go back. I keep clicking on, so newbie, and let's do um, monitor temp file system or temp directory, okay? And fs notify b for slash temp and the path is like i said slash temp anything that happened in slash temp i want to be notified about it and so i'll say create b and this should be running notice as soon as i save it it's, it's running okay so the only thing left now is for me to go over there and log in so let me log into my server because i want to be able to um notice we have some events already so a directory was removed right this directory was removed and then yeah so we already have events firing so that's good i don't have to go do anything but if i um do touch slash temp slash test and notice how it says created and then change mod so me just creating that file resulted in two events the type of event was created and then change mod and then i could remove slash tmp slash test and there we go um you can see remove from my test directory so so that's totally firing and that's good all right so now we have three b's but of course the chrome one is not working but we have these two running the email b which can send an email and my file notification b so let's create a link and so we can say a chain sorry so let's select this as the B that we want to um, send an event from. And notice this is all the events that are available for this B, but this particular B only has one event, and that is a file system event. Now, we have already seen in the documentation, it spits out uh, one of these things. Now, what I've shown you here is how you can specify filters using Go template language. If you don't know what Go template is, check out my video here on Go template or you can just go to golang and yes and it explained what how to use templates i'm going to spend the time here now doing it but it's sort of straightforward you just imagine that there's a structure that's provided to you and you have that object and to access the feel of that structure you simply do dot com so here if you notice 
we have these curly braces they call them andrew bar and you do that count and this refers to the count feel in a in an object of this structure but you don't know the object is all you know though is that it has these fields and you can access it and that's all there is to it um and so that's what they're using here and they're basically saying you can call this function test and what you want to test is is something equal does it has a certain prefix does it contain something so these are functions that are provided to you by beehive and you use go template it to template to um, run functions or to extract values and so that would be the way you can filter things out so for example you can say is the type of this event equals to create if you just wanted to see create only or if you want to filter out create not equals to create you know things like that or does the path contains x y and z so we're not going to do any filtering so we'll just click continue and then now this is the action b so we have to pick the event b now we have to pick the action b because that's how you link them and so this action b where we selected it can send email so we do that and so what is available to our action b it's going to be the type and path so email address who do we want to send it to let's just send it to ourselves so just stuff at just stuff at striveversity.com and email um, of the sender that's what it is and then email of the recipient there we go and then subject of the email got file change or file notification right file system notification for and then i can do something like this for this path right because i'm using go template and the content of the email is change type and then i could do something like this that type and then um you know path and so i should expect that all oh, these are going to be replaced with the type and path and then if it's html maybe i don't know if i want to send html i could say bold and you know maybe blah 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 that path blah 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 that for html okay describe this change my file let me see temp file system notification file email okay and then da 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 you know put some description i'm tired of coming up trying to figure out what to put and then i create that and now let's go make a change to that directory so let's see i just created that so i don't expect there to be any emails so let's go back here let's click on inbox so no e email and let's just touch that directory again and so it we get the notification but then when it tries to send the email we have a fatal so we received the notification that was fine it executed um, this email it was trying to send the email see sender recipient but fatal to runtime invalid memory address on no point of reference. so I'm not sure um, maybe is the way I specified my email um, but let's go back and test that and see um, well I wish if that had like a test so when you create this email sender you could do like a test button here to make sure that oh yeah actually what you put in there is correct so let's do this so we put the email as at triversity.com and let's do save and let me see the was five seven eight what was that port number well i'll leave out the port number because that should be the default and let's go back and well not go back there but let's go here and touch remove remove that file and see if it creates an event okay it looks like i'm still getting exception here invalid memory address um not sure why um if you go to beehive website and you scroll down a little bit um it shows you an example of yeah 
there is the username at gmail password and then um I don't know if this works, but let me try my Gmail and see. Create a beehive a email B that is going to use my Gmail and see if that works. So I'll go back to B, I'll select this guy and let me change it. Uh oh, you know, my email used two factor authentication, so this will not work. Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me just try it anyway. touch mail and yep still getting um fatal error so what do we learn so far it was very easy to set up um beehive it has some promising hives like um the one i really want to use is this file system notifier so it can monitor a directory when i um finish editing a video and then automatically posts um, to a Facebook post, a Twitter post, and Instagram. I don't see Instagram, but at least two out of three isn't bad if I could get it to work. Um, I haven't tried doing exactly that yet because I don't want to do any fake posts. I was hoping that oh, this simple test, <laughs> um, and literally this is what I would have done without recording it. I would have tried something, see if it would have worked to just be able to send an email and then that would have been like oh that's promising but i can't even get to send email um maybe the other guys don't have the same problem like we know the file notification one is working i'm not sure why the chrome one is not working that one baffles me that should work that one is fairly easy to work to get something to send some um a notification periodically i do not know why that's not working and here's the documentation sort of for that what properties you can use and what values can use and it's still not working. So um, that's sort of weird. Um, what else? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's a dependency in my system that I need to have Chrome tab installed maybe. And so let me do that actually. So let's do sudo uh, um, install minus y Chrome tab. It didn't, they should have specified that, but okay. So Chrome tab, yep, unable to locate package Chrome tab. Um, see, app cache, search, Chrome tab. Um, so Chrome, okay, so just Chrome. So let's just do Chrome and there we go. Oh, it says already installed. So, yep, um, not sure why, if Chrome is already installed, why, still would have a problem yet. No, I'm still having events in my directory because it's the temp directory that I'm monitoring and the operating system is creating and deleting files in there. So yeah, so I am getting those events kicked off, um, but this doesn't work. So what I'll do is, because I don't want that to be trying to send any event anymore, I'll just delete those bees. But hopefully this worked for you at least. You know what my intentions were and maybe your mileage would vary the only other thing i wanted to i should warn you about um, with this is if you don't download what i did was i download a pre-built version if you don't want to do that and you want to go the route of building from the latest maybe i should do this to make sure though the latest one is working and maybe whatever bug that was in that pre-built one maybe it's fixed here um, if you do this um, be sure to use make just like they show you here if you do not use make and you use like go get or go build then um you're going to run into some issues which is basically it you have to run it from the directory is built so it can find the images and so on so it's probably best to stay with this build instruction or use the already prepackaged one um next time i'll try and look at one called eugen and see if that's if i have any more luck with eugen um than i, I did with beehive all right if you like what you're seeing Definitely subscribe, spread the word, click that notification bell, and thumbs up the video. Take care, have a great day. See you soon.